well, the MP for North West Norfolk, who we talked to at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital so often over the last couple of years. What does it feel like? We now know that, that it is going to get rebuilt. It feels brilliant. It's absolutely amazing for the brilliant staff here, for the local community of West Norfolk. And now we've got the confidence and the certainty to move forward with a new hospital when before we weren't even on the list. So we've come a long way. So it's brilliant news for everyone. We spoke to you relatively recently and you said you were optimistic an announcement was coming. When did you... A good inclination on Monday that there was going to be an announcement coming later in the week. Um, obviously, pulling together a massive programme like this, worth over £20 billion pounds of, for 40 hospitals, takes a lot of time. So, But with the, uh, the, the strong support of the local community, by working with the hospital team here, with local MPs, the support of councillors, we've gone to a position where we weren't on the list, to where the RAC hospitals are now the priority. They are the top priority of the government to deliver in terms of new hospitals. Alice, talk me through yesterday as the announcement was, was finally made. Where, where were you and, and did, did the team all sort of watch it together? We were in my office. We'd pulled together some um, staff and we were absolutely watching um, Parliament Live. Uh, we saw our um, supportive MPs um, listening to the information as it came through and I have to say staff were absolutely ecstatic. We then sent out a broadcast email and yesterday afternoon I was able to go round to departments and just check everyone had got the news. The excitement was palpable. It was really great. We had tears, we had laughter and we had a real Real sense of celebration so um, yeah it, it was fantastic and amazing to absolutely hear that news at last. Talk to me about the conditions your staff are having to, to work in at the moment because we, we can't see the props from here we, we know they're here we'll perhaps go and have a look at some of them later on but but it, it, it this is an absolute game changer isn't it? Oh gosh it certainly is we've got a very extensive program and we have got just over 4,000 props currently um, what it means for staff is they are having to continually move we're having to make sure patients are in the right place we're having to move services, we have to move um, support um, structures. It's a phenomenal programme led by our Estates Department and as you said, um, as you opened your show this morning, we've got a number of contractors on site that are continuously supporting us and making sure that we keep the hospital safe, which we are doing on a daily basis. I wanted to ask you about that because I've really noticed it. Stood outside this morning at 7 o'clock, there were probably more people in hard hats than dressed as if they were going to be working in a hospital. It really has brought it home. What, what is going on here at the moment just to keep the place running? So at the moment we're doing a programme of work with um, theatres. We've got some theatres shut and what it essentially means is you have to take the roof down, we have to put steel props in and then we have to hold and um, support the roof. That is happening across every area. So we've got a ward shut at the moment. It takes a phenomenal amount of time because clearly there's all the electrics, all the gases, everything has to be looked at. Um, we also have to do a programme of testing around on the walls. So it is a huge huge amount of work to do um, and the teams that we are working with our local communities are phenomenal and it's just great to be able to have this news and to be able to think we will keep going with it until we shut these doors however we have got um, hope for the future yeah but but that reality that the challenges of constantly moving people around making sure everything's safe that that's going to continue for years to come still isn't it it will continue until we shut these doors um, absolutely we won't let up and we will make sure that this building is safe for patients every day so we can be absolutely certain that this will be done by 2030. That's, the big, that's been the big question all the way along. I'm going to put that to the MP. Absolutely. We've got a car sign guarantee from the Health Secretary yesterday. I asked him this specifically. It's a fully funded plan and the doors will be open by 2030. He was here in July last year. He saw the props. We went up to Necton Ward where you were talking to people earlier. Matt Hancock had been there previously. Other health ministers. Getting them to the hospital has been a real game changer in terms of winning the argument that the rack needed to be sorted out. So now the five other RAC hospitals are coming into the programme ahead of some of the others. That's great news. That's why this has been my top priority for the last three and a half years. And by working together, we've all managed to deliver a brilliant result for staff and patients and for the wider West Norfolk community. How hard has it been, though, with, with almost a revolving door in the, the Health Secretary's office over the last year or so? Well, uh, I've had to keep going. Sometimes you kind of feel like you've almost got someone over the line in terms of they're going to announce it and then they resign or they get moved or you get a new Prime Minister coming in. So, But you have to keep going because it's been so important and that's why I've done it. And I'm just delighted that Steve Barclay has really driven this across the line. He put rack first and has made sure we're going to be there and we're going to be open by 2030. You mentioned this has been your, your big thing, your priority over the last three and a half years. 
when did that happen? What, what, what was the, the moment the penny dropped for you that, that this was so important? Well, uh, when I was standing as a candidate during the election campaign, I was talking about the need for major investment because at that time the RAC problems were there, but we hadn't got on the list. So winning the argument and moving us to the, to the top of the list and some other hostels are moving down the list as a result, which is unfortunate for them. But the safety issues here are paramount and the, there's the money protected to ensure the hostel stays safe. That's been protected, but there's money for a new hospital. And that's what I'm very excited about for our area. You talk about getting health secretaries here and showing them has, has been vital to it. What was your reaction like when you were first shown how bad things had got here? Well, I thought it was appalling and having to work in those conditions and lying in the bed. I remember when Steve Barkley and Matt Hancock came to Nectar Ward and they talked to patients who were looking up at these wooden struts and they, they didn't hold back in telling them what they thought about it. And I don't think you can get that argument across unless someone's actually come and seen it and heard directly from the patients and the staff who every day are working around it. And uh, the team here are doing a brilliant job in making sure it stays safe and we'll, we'll now get on with those plans for a new hostel. I wanted to interview you both here in the main reception because we've got this model uh, in, in the Perspex case behind us here which shows what the new hospital is going to look like. And it's been a bit of a dream, hasn't it, for a while, Alice? We now know it's going to happen. Uh, you've got um, the, the bit that's going to be the new hospital is, is um, shown here by a sort of bright pink model. You're telling me the new hospital actually isn't going to be bright pink. That, that's just for illustrative purposes. It is absolutely for illustrative purposes. Um, I can say at the moment the model shows that we've got the new hospital will go on to the car park so the land is earmarked before we do anything we will build the multi-story car park we got planning permission for that a couple of weeks ago and that's going to be really important and we will um, deliver that and then we can start on the main element let me just ask you some of the questions we've had from listeners that have come in this morning hopefully you'll be able to answer them i think you will because um, you'll be across all of this i'm sure ed in kings lynn says there's no sign of uh, the ambulance station on the new hospital plan where will that be at the moment we um have got that um still where it is but it will um absolutely be part of the future of where we um deliver services ambulances are as important as ever they were so um they need to be with us well there was one just as we arrived this morning there was one just dropping a, a patient off and i think we, we were able to pick up from the conversation we overheard that they were bringing a baby who was two hours old in and everything was wow. fine so i think we're okay wow. to mention it because yeah. we just heard one of the one of the medical staff say there you go he's only two hours old and he's had his first ride in an ambulance <laughs> shows how important this place is it doesn't is. it it is it's a real part of the community and i think um having moved up here two years ago it's really evident that it is at the heart of the community and we need to keep it that way you mentioned planning permission for the car park <clears throat> What about planning permission for the rest of it? You'll need that, won't you? Uh, we most certainly will, and we will work with our um, local partners and um, make sure that all of that is done as it needs to be. So um, we're hopeful that that won't be too long. Yeah, that was a question for, from John in case who wants to know how many years that might take. Uh, David in Tavram says, well overdue. It's amazing that they found the money, uh, but I don't know if it's the right type of build. They're compromising the construction. The modular route isn't the best choice for the hospital. They want to last for years. They need a more conventional build. I suppose that's a question that you can both come in on, really. How, how certain are we that the new hospital will be fit for purpose and, and built to last? So I would be totally honest with you and say I can't give you all the construction details, that's not my forte. Um, I know we are working nationally to look at um, having the most sustainable and the most carbon neutral that we can and we will work through the plans that we get um, but the finer detail um, I am not, uh, um, not qualified to comment on. But, but it's important that it's built to last isn't it? Absolutely, and there's this hospital 2.0 is what the health secretary is talking about. And by standardising the design so we don't have five different versions of everything, we don't have different sized bathrooms, um, we can bring down the cost. He was talking about efficiency savings of 25% per square foot, which is obviously a massive difference, and that's why we're able to bring all of the hospitals into the programme. So there's a lot of work going on on that. You've been talking about Paget and some of the improvements that are happening there and a demonstration and we've seen on this site as well we've got the new endoscopy unit that's that's come in as making a real difference so this is the future of construction and design and, the, and this hostel program is going to be blazing a trail with that so is this the end of the beginning the beginning of the end i don't know does the campaign continue for you, for you james are there, are there still things you need to push on to make sure now that this is delivered on well now i'll continue working with alice and the team here with the regional nhs and with the department to make sure that the plans proceed a pace as they need to and we get the funding for other parts of the improvements and the enabling works which need to happen to bring the site but what everyone in West Norfolk can be confident now is there is a fully funded plan to get a new QEH here by 2030 that is a commitment by this government and that's brilliant news
And that's, that's going to happen then. We can say that with some certainty. Final word from you, Alice, because you, you told us earlier on how you went around the hospital yesterday, spoke to staff, told them the good news. Was there one comment you got back or one moment that, that, that's going to stay with you? Oh, I, gosh, there are so many comments. And I think the biggest thing was people saying, I just can't believe it. It is such good news for us. And I just wish I was going to still be here working. So, um, you know, we've got a number of staff who are tipping over into retirement. And I've assured them we won't let them retire till we're in the new hospital. But um, it's a, just a huge thank you from me to absolutely everybody, our community, patient staff, people who have supported us. And um, it has been a long journey, but we're delighted to share it with everybody. Thank you. You're going to need that, those staff, aren't you? Because at some point you're going to have a sort of new hospital and an old hospital that you're trying to run at the same time. We're, con we're, we're continuously um, looking at ways of developing, um, and we're just very grateful to everybody for everything they do every day. Thanks for coming to see us, Alice. I think a few of your staff have been uh, sort of walking a bit straighter when they've walked in this morning and seen that the chief executive <laughs> stood by the main, main, main door. They, they've also bypassed the microphone. I hate yeah, to Yeah, of course they have. Yeah, they, <laughs> people do. It's a good way of putting people off. Lovely to meet you, Alice. Thanks Thank for you coming much. to see us Thank early you. this morning. James Wild, well, th thank you to you as well for, for, for coming to see us. Thanks very much. And I've been on your show so many times. It's just great to be here with you with a decision announced that there's going to be a new hospital in Kingsland. Yes, it's been a while, hasn't it? But thanks very much, James Wild. Uh, it's BBC Radio Norfolk. It's 19.